Greetings, my name is Emily Breaker and I'm the Education and Training Officer for the Arctos Working Group and I'll be presenting a brief overview of Arctos as a collaborative scalable collection management solution. Arctos offers a full suite of tools for hosting, managing, and linking collections data. Currently, Arctos is home to over 4.4 million records that represent diverse specimen and object types spanning biological, geological, and cultural disciplines. Tools also exist for managing associated materials that many of us curate, such as archives and observation records, as well as emerging collection types like environmental samples and microbiomes. Arctos is both a data portal and a collection management system. The online portal supports basic and complex queries to meet the needs of different user bases, from researchers to educators to resource managers, and data management functions cover all aspects of physical and digital collection curation and offer several useful tools for compiling annual report impact metrics, as well as improving data quality and discoverability. Arctos is a web-based platform, enabling easy access from almost anywhere and fully avoiding the hassles of server maintenance, software configuration, and DIY data backups. Arctos and Arctos Media are hosted on secure, high-performance servers at the Texas Advanced Computing Center, with regular tape backups and backup instances at separate facilities. A cloud-based architecture means that data are live and edits to records are immediately displayed in real time to portal users. This model also facilitates rapid integration and community-wide rollout of new features as they're developed, sometimes even the same day that they're requested. Beyond standard collection management features, the Arctos data model is object-based and structured around the core tenets of data quality, connectivity, and community. These principles enable a rich data ecosystem that supports the digital extended specimen. I hope to demonstrate these core principles in the following example, and while I won't be able to detail every last Arctos feature, hopefully you'll gain a sense of all the dynamic linkages and tools that are available in Arctos to both public users and data managers from the lens of a single specimen record. So here we have a record for a chipmunk collected in 2007 in Colorado. The collecting data are summarized at the top of the page with far more detail available in the tables below. So starting with identifications, we see two determinations applied on different dates using different methodologies. Arctos can store full identification history for specimens. Clicking on the scientific name, we're taken to the summary page for this taxon that's shared across Arctos. And this page displays all the geo-references and media linked to the species, common names and synonymy, and classification trees from various external sources. Going back, we can check out information on people associated with this record. So clicking on the collector, John Dombowski, who's the curator of mammals at DMNS, we're taken to his public agent page, which summarizes biographical info and career effort, including name variants, relationships, and publicly available addresses. Next, a sortable table compiles collecting activities across Arctos collections, and I can navigate to any of these record sets. So these happen to be insects deposited at the University of Alaska Museum, collected by John. We also have linked media associated with this agent, as well as his identifications, his project participation, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, as well as publications. So we're tracking lots of attribution data that can be easily shared and linked in a CV or used to research a particular agent. This chipmunk has been cited in several publications. Most of these have a DOI, which we can easily pull up. And there's also an internal page where we can view all the other specimens cited within this article, as well as the cross-ref data that's pulled in, noting how many subsequent publications have gone on to cite this work. Next is a table summarizing biological attributes for this specimen with linked controlled vocabulary and definitions. We also have media linked with the chipmunk and the ability to tag anything within the scene to represent various relationships to people, places, and things. And below is the collecting locality information with associated media linked to this particular place or collecting event. And clicking on locality will again take us to a detailed page displaying Arctos-wide metadata, including spatial web service data and cleaning tools. Further down, all of the chipmunk's identifiers are summarized, including extended specimen products like a Dryad database and GenBank and NCBI links for this individual. So navigating out to the sequence data, we've got a reciprocal link back to Arctos from GenBank. 
And then at the bottom of the record, we have the parts table where we see an ectoparasite was harvested from the specimen and catalog separately. And we can click to explore the associated lice record. All ArcTest records have links to corresponding occurrence pages. So here's the link out to the associated IDIG bio page. Additionally, GBIF and Globi occurrence links are automatically generated for these two records. Next, I'll log in so I can access the accession data for this record and easily view other individuals from the same accession file or check out the attached permit or other transaction documentation. Similarly, I can view the loan history for this record or scroll down to see which specific part has been loaned. And once in that loan record, view transaction information, attached invoices, as well as other specimens included on the loan. And finally, the last thing I'll touch on are projects. And projects are a flexible tool that summarizes collections usage and can be implemented in many different ways. So this one happens to describe grant activities associated with the specimen, but projects can describe an expedition or any sort of grouping, such as all federally reposited materials held by an institution. So here we've got the funder, abstract, and resulting publications produced by this project. We also have catalog records used, and these are collated across institutions since this was a collaborative grant project, as well as view all the cascading layers of all corresponding projects that either used or contributed records associated with this project. And these are all automatically pulled into this page, as well as the media produced on the project. So we really get a sense of downstream research impacts, which can be really powerful to stakeholders. And Arctos project pages are publicly accessible and can be conveniently linked with grants and annual reports. So I know that was quick, but hopefully it showcased the dynamic connectivity in Arctos, all of which is made possible by a shared data environment. Values for agents, places, taxonomic names, and code tables are community sourced and shared across Arctos collections. This communal catalog reduces errors and enables data improvements and efficiencies. So for example, as we saw, Agents have in-depth profiles that make it possible for an institution with limited information to check against existing profiles to corroborate people's identities based on the places and decades they were active or their known lifespan. Users can opt into selecting already georeferenced localities, saving time and duplicated efforts. And new collections need only to add novel taxon names not yet represented in the Arctos Authority table during data migration or instead select a preferred web service classification that's refreshed regularly. And finally, many code tables have controlled values to standardize data and make it more discoverable. All code table values and definitions are community suggested and vetted, and when possible, a source authority is linked to the definition. The major perk of Arctos is that it's scalable. So whether you have a thousand or a million records, all features are equally available to users and there are no premiums needed to access different modules or request new capabilities or data fields. A benefit of a shared model is that Arctos fields are already mapped to Darwin Core and Audubon Core archives, meaning that users don't need to set up and maintain their own IPT, but rather sit back, relax, and allow automated data packaging and publishing to occur. This is beneficial to all users, but especially so for smaller institutions that may lack local IT staff and resources to maintain digital infrastructure. In addition to programmer support, we have an active GitHub community that rapidly addresses questions and bug issues, as well as community developed resources and virtual office hours to help new operators. Additionally, here's a quick sneak peek at some unique tools available to help refine data and add value to records. I wanted to quickly highlight the customized low quality data report that finds data gaps and recommends improvements. And these are all optional, but aim to make your data ultimately more findable and usable. And these often serve as the perfect pre-packaged volunteer or student project. Last but not least, perhaps the biggest perk of joining Arctos is gaining a network of peers that regularly interact through the Arctos Working Group and the Arctos GitHub repository where the code and discussion board are maintained. Every Arctos user is encouraged to join in to collaborate and guide database developments and enhancements. So feel free to check out GitHub to see how ideas are suggested, refined, and put into motion. And for those of you considering Arctos, the community provides peer mentorship to answer questions and onboard new collections as they follow a guided migration workflow. We really think Arctos excels at what it does because it's truly collaboratively forged from collection stewards like you and me. So we hope you'll join us and you can learn more here. Feel free to get in touch. Thanks.